really something I'll never forget. Because you knew it was going to make history. Sometimes in, inwardly you, you're fighting to hold back tears too. And, and not, not necessarily tears of sorrows. Uh, a lot of times there's tears of gladness, you know, of the progress that's been made. third year at law school and we do what I glorify and call it a thesis and I was doing it on the uh, 1964 Civil Rights Act which supposedly was going to make it possible for for African Americans to, to really recognize and realize the rights they should have already had. When you saw what was happening in the, in the national news and that I was writing about it and I and I thought well you know maybe this is a good time to go down and demonstrate that, that we are concerned about this so that was, I guess, a principal reason to go see what, it, see what was really going on, participate in something that was obviously going to be historic and, and get a real feeling for what I was writing about in a more academic way. We were in a group, a section, where we kind of were kept, you know, so there were a lot of people from Massachusetts and Worcester and people, other people who come down in various ways. So, yeah, there was several hundred people in a, a section where we kind of stayed together all day. Uh, by the time the march started, you had approximately, uh, according to the estimates, of 25,000 people. And it was very well organized. And uh, I then sensed what we were really doing, which was demonstrating you know, that, that we were supporting the, 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 the very basic right to vote. And it was being protested by the people who were, had probably the most to lose, and these were the, the, the poor white people who didn't have much differentiation except that was the one thing they could cling to that made them different from the African American population. So only the Confederate flag was flying because that was a way of telling people <laughs> this is where we belong. My father was a sharecropper so the earliest thing I can recall was really life on the farm as a sharecropper and that whole dynamic in terms of uh, uh, working on the farm and um, being, you know, and having to harvest crops uh, for the plantation owner. And of course, uh, I was one who dreamed of a better life, a different kind of life. And uh, so, as we would uh, be in the cotton fields, um, we would see the Greyhound bus going every day, going north because they had a schedule. And uh, it was, I believe it was Highway 49. And of course, we would all dream and one of uh, our dream were to be on that bus one day and go north. So that was the thing that kind of kept us going, that one day we'd be on that bus. As you know, all over the South, the doctor's office, all kind of public accommodation, water fountain, bathrooms, uh, even in the private sector, restaurants, uh, hotels, where you had the black only signs. And if you violated that, you were subject to be jail, beat, you know, whatever. They gather around with their Confederate flags and their uh, bullhorn and bats and stuff. They would call you names, the N-word and all that stuff, and try to interrupt the march. I was one of the flag boys. Uh, the flag person had to go first. And you're looking ahead at this mob there, <laughs> and, you know, and you have to keep going because you've decided you ain't gonna let nobody turn you around, so you have to keep going. When I was in high school, the uh, greatest dream that a black kid could have was to be a school teacher, or maybe work in agriculture. My grandkids today can dream of becoming the president of the United States. So that's progress. It's, it's not easy, and I don't think it'll ever be easy, but it's a reality. America has change. And some people take that to mean that we have arrived. Two different things. Arrive in me, you go on a vacation, a trip, and you have arrived at your destination. We have not arrived at our destination. We're in the process. And we will continue to be arriving. Oh,